Thomas Pocklington Trust logo. Charles Bonnet Syndrome, the truths behind the Coronation Street storyline. Hello and welcome to this webinar on Charles Bonnet Syndrome. The purpose of this webinar is to explain what it is, what support there is, to update you on existing research, and to learn how Charles Bonnet Syndrome became part of a story of one of the most watched TV programmes. My name is Charles Cahoon. I'm CEO of Thomas Pocklington Trust, a charity that supports blind and partially sighted people, and is a long-term supporter for promoting awareness of Charles Bonney Syndrome. I'm very fortunate to be joined by four people, Judith Potts, actor, health writer and founder of Esme's Umbrella, a campaign to raise awareness of Charles Bonney Syndrome, and is also a trustee of Thomas Pocklington Trust. Maria Musuji, leading research professor and consultant ophthalmologist at UCL, Moorfields and Great Ormond Street Hospital for Children and has a specialist interest in Charles Bonney Syndrome. Nina Cheswa, who ran a creative cafe before she lost her sight and has retrained as a holistic therapist and has Charles Bonney Syndrome. And lastly, Richard Hawley, an actor well known for his work in Grushko, Prime Suspect, Family Affairs, Love Actually, to name but a few. And since 2015, he has played Johnny Connor in ITV's Coronation Street in over 500 episodes, and Johnny develops Charles Bonney Syndrome. So thank you very much to all of you for being so generous with your time. I'd just first of all like to start off with an explanation of what is Charles Bonney Syndrome. Judith, would you like to explain that? Charles Bonney Syndrome develops when someone of any age, children too, have lost over 60% of sight. It causes vivid, silent, visual hallucinations, which range from disturbing to terrifying. It is not a mental health condition, but is caused entirely by loss of sight. When you have sight, there are messages that run constantly from the retina to the visual cortex. But as sight diminishes, these messages slow or stop. But for some reason that we still don't understand, the brain doesn't stop. The brain fires up and creates its own images. And what you see depends on which part of the brain is firing. And how did you get involved? How did Esme's umbrella come about? Esme's umbrella came about because my mum was the Esme of Esme's umbrella. She had glaucoma, which had been diagnosed very late. Uh, and one day she said to me, I do wish these people would get off my sofa. Well, as you can imagine, I had absolutely no idea how to answer that one because there was no one on her sofa. And while I paused, she said, and... There's an Edwardian tear-stained street child who follows me everywhere and a hideous gargoyle-like creature that jumps from table to chair. And sometimes the whole room or garden morphs into an alien place. And I thought she, this has got to be dementia. But then I thought, well, no, it can't be because she completes the telegraph cryptic crossword every day. So I left her. She was fine at that time. She was coping with them. Um... So off I went home. And with the most enormous piece of luck, I read a tiny paragraph buried in the health pages of a newspaper about a condition caused by loss of sight, Charles Bonnet syndrome. And I thought, marvellous. So I called her. I said, don't worry about it. I know what you've got. This is fine. I will ring your ophthalmologist, which I did. And sorry, Maria, this is where it all went wrong. The ophthalmologist concerned, who I think had better remain nameless, refused point blank to discuss it with me or explain why he'd never warned us that this might happen. Her GP had never heard of it, thought I was being fanciful, and the optometrist had never heard of it. So onto the internet I went and found Dr. now Professor Dominic Fitch. At that time, I was writing a health column for The Telegraph, actually about cancer, but I thought, I'm going to write about this. So I went to see Dominic, talked to him. He confirmed that's what Esme had. And I began to write uh, columns and was inundated with emails from people who had thought that they were losing their mind uh, or who just wanted to tell me their stories. And after my mum died, I thought I really ought to do something about this. But it wasn't until I received an email from a professor at a university in New York who told me the story of her mum, who had been admitted to a dementia unit because she was hallucinating worms and slugs on her food and in her drink. 
No one had heard of Charles Bonny syndrome. The family thought she was perfectly sane, but took the advice of the doctor. The lady could not get beyond the worms and slugs. She stopped eating and drinking and died. And that was the final straw. And so in 2015 at the House of Commons, I launched Esme's Umbrella in memory of mum. Thank you very much. Nina, can you just tell us a little bit about yourself and how Charles Bonny syndrome affects you? I have Charles Bonnet syndrome and it developed when I lost my sight nearly three years ago now. I've been visually impaired all my life and never heard of the condition, never had the condition. Then when I lost my sight, I started to see waves of colour. At, at first, I thought it was that they saved some of my sight during the surgery, but I was reassured by the doctor at the time that it wasn't my sight and I can't see and it was just my mind playing tricks on me were his words. I didn't really say anything Um, went home, got home, was recovering and the hallucinations or the images they started to develop, more colour would come in, it kind of went into full rainbow spectrum, then shapes developed and then eventually they turned into faces one of the scarier ones that I had was like a zombie face and um, it was kind of like Picasso-esque and it had no eyes in the sockets and there was blood dripping from the sockets and it kind of just was floating in front of my face and this went on for around three weeks. I still kept it to myself. I was really worried about telling anybody because I thought that they might think I'm having a nervous breakdown because of losing my sight or they might think I'm a bit crazy <laughs> but eventually it got that bad and I was that scared that I had to say I had to speak to someone so I told my family we were still getting no answers at all from the doctors GP my specialist my eye specialist so we went into research mode and then that's when I came across uh, Esme's umbrella and Judith on the internet. So in fact you found out that you had Charles Bonney syndrome through Esme's umbrella rather than from a medical profession? Yes, definitely. I went back to my eye doctors and one of them had heard of it. Another doctor said it was to do with the remaining part of light that I, I've got coming into my eye and that's refracting and that's what's causing the green colours. And then my other specialist said that she'd heard of Charles Bonnet syndrome, but she didn't really know anything about it. It was hard. It was hard to accept that the doctors couldn't tell me what it was. So that's what for, uh, pushed me more into to finding more more about it and, and finding out what it was. And it was Dominic um, that actually explained the science behind it for me when I went to a patient support day that Judith put on in York. Um, so there I got so many answers and I got to speak to other people that were going through it as well. So that was nice to find out I wasn't alone. Maria, is that quite common for people to find out they've got Charles Bonney syndrome from someone other than a medical professional? You know, I'd like to say that most ophthalmologists are aware of Charles Bonnet syndrome. Now, um, having listened to both Judith and Nina, that may possibly be as a, a few lines under an eponymous syndrome in our textbooks um, and hopefully more prominently nowadays. Uh, but the, I think the real issue is that they've never been very good at asking or informing patients about this. Now, Judith has clearly done an amazing job at raising awareness amongst ophthalmologists, GPs, optometrists, and allied healthcare professionals. And I really think that this is filtered down to community support groups as well. So more people are talking about this. But as we can see from the episodes in Coronation Street and the recent publicity in the news, uh, many people with sight loss still have never heard of Charles Bonnet syndrome and are probably living in fear. So I think it's one thing to be aware of this condition, but we, and I speak on behalf of all healthcare professionals, need to discuss it with every patient that we see who is suffering from sight loss. I think it needs to be incorporated into our history taking skills like we ask about smoking and then give a bit of kind of information about why it's important to stop. We can just expand on what Charles Bonnet syndrome is. 
um, patients need to be forewarned about this because then it will help them cope with the effects, rationalise it and then reach out for support. As Nina mentioned, being aware was very helpful in terms of helping to do cope with Charles Bonnet syndrome. Is there anything else you can do to help mitigate the impact of having Charles Bonnet syndrome? And there are simple coping mechanisms using distractive techniques like trying to touch the hallucination, walking around the room or switching a light on and off, um, and that will really help the majority. What we need to really do is stay connected. Family and friends need to call each other. Um, many charities are offering counselling services such as the Macula Society and a buddying system, which Retina UK has introduced. And then Esme's Umbrella is just the most amazing resource. They offer a helpline counselling. Um, so please do reach out uh, to, to these charities. Um, and if there is anyone listening who's really concerned that they're being severely affected by these visual hallucinations, then get in touch with your GP, your optician, and even your eye doctor, because we do know about Charles Bonnet syndrome now, thanks to all of the work that's been, been undertaken recently. And we will then support you and make the appropriate referrals to psych, um, specialists in psychiatry who can maybe investigate further and provide that supportive management that is needed. M M Maria, do, do children suffer from Charles Bonnet syndrome or is it an adult? Uh, only adults who suffer from it. No, children do suffer from Charles Bonnet syndrome. So we recently published a study uh, describing the largest group of children with this condition. Um, and the average age of onset of hallucinations was 11 years old. And the majority of patients suffered from an inherited retinal disease such as Stargardt's disease. And it's so important that we are aware that Charles Bonnet syndrome occurs in children with sight loss because the psychological impact is different. Young people may um, develop, or they may think that they're developing schizophrenia. It can impact on their sleep, their diet, relationships, schooling, career choices. I know one patient that had to drop out of university because they were so plagued by their hallucinations, they couldn't focus, they couldn't form any friendships. Um, and this can have a huge, long-lasting effect um, on, on this group of individuals. So all healthcare professionals seeing children and families with sight loss should raise Charles Bonnet syndrome, as we should do with adults, but it will prepare them, prepare parents to watch out for this um, and help them deal with it if it arises. Richard, had you heard of Charles Bonnet syndrome before your character developed it? Uh, no, no, I hadn't, not at all. This was in the pipeline quite a long time ago, certainly before any of this pandemic. And at some point in all this, I, 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 my producer decided, they decided to go ahead with it. And so he, you know, we had a phone call arranged and I was actually driving back from Cornwall in my camper van and I just pulled up because I had this phone call coming. I pulled into a lay-by, I was eating blackberries in the lay-by. He told me the story with all its kind of uh, struggle and beauty. Um, and redemption and, and all of that. Uh, and, and then I got back in, I carried on driving and quite randomly actually was listening to the World Service. And then I heard the music of the Happy Mondays coming up and, Le and Nina, this like, and then this Manchester voice started talking all about exactly what I'd just been told. Uh, with, at the end, this really strong you know, sort of positive kind of view of what's happened to, to her and how she's dealing with it and a sense of mission about, 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 about spreading awareness, really. And I thought, this is great. This is just great that I've just been told that. I'm on Coronation Street and um, there you go. I'm hearing that. So I kind of thought, I, I got a hold of the Coronation Street people and said, you've got to get this girl. And they said, we've already got, we've already got them. Really. So... <laughs> Uh, they'd all, they were already on that. But it was just a, it, a little mystic moment where you go, something is going to happen from all this. This is really exciting. Richard, can you just talk a little bit more about the impact Charles Bonney syndrome had on your character? He, it's, for, it's real for him. It's absolutely real. I mean, he's in prison and he's seeing mice and rats and all these mm -hmm. things. And, and then one or two things are a bit odd, like musical notes in the air. But fundamentally... 
I think he could just see that he just believed that it was reality. Once he gets the diagnosis, that eases off. Um, all he sees is a, a man in a suit and he's, he wants it to be his son. It isn't, but he wants it to be. He's convinced that one day the guy will turn around and he'll say hello. And I didn't mind doing that because, I, you know, I, people have said, I mean, in a simple way, Nina talked about how as a visual artist, you could still see colour. Other people did talk, I did get examples of people who were doing exactly the same thing. They perhaps see a body and maybe projecting onto it, but they got some comfort. So we chose to play that um, rather than the full on horrors. Could you just talk a little bit about the impact Coronation Street's had on awareness of Charles Bonney syndrome? This has been really quite exciting because people genuinely haven't heard of it and it's genuinely making a strong and an immediate difference all over the world because Coronation Street is viewed uh, probably as m even more uh, abroad. Canada, it's huge. So not just in this country. And, you know, Judith was telling me that there aren't particularly um, groups, charities m making people aware of this anywhere in the world except here. So there you go. I just want to say two things. One, Richard, wonderful, wonderful performance. Also, Richard has very kindly agreed to be patron of Esme's Umbrella. And I am enormously grateful to him for that. The second thing is I discovered this morning that in the few days, two, three days after the reveal of the diagnosis, my uh, helpline at the RNIB received 1,300 calls. Not bad. Gosh. It just, just shows the power of primetime TV, doesn't it? Absolutely. Absolutely. I would have had to work 24 hours a day for the rest of my life to even begin to get the kind of coverage that uh, Coronation I just wanted to turn to the future. Um, Maria, what, what are the next areas do you think for research going forwards um, and what's you know, the future for Charles Bonnet syndrome? So I, th I think we need to approach Charles Bonnet syndrome from three angles. So firstly, I think it's really important that we establish how common Charles Bonnet syndrome is. Uh, we've heard various different figures over the last few days, um, and there haven't been any formal epidemiological studies. So we're hoping to tackle this with funding from Thomas Washington Trust, uh, beginning with looking at the incidence of, of Charles Bonnet in children. Um, and I, I'd just like to thank Thomas Pocklington Trust for, for the funding that I've received um, and for funding my co-investigator, Dr. Lee Jones, who's a psychologist and has been helping me incredibly with all of our Charles Bonnet research. Um, but we're also going to be working with researchers at Oxford University to look at the prevalence um, of CBS in adults across hospital eye services. The next area I think is important is to understand exactly why these visual hallucinations develop in some patients with sight loss, but not in others. Um, and we need to understand the disease mechanism because we're not quite sure at the moment. And I, and I do think that some of that research is already underway um, in Newcastle. And then thirdly, uh, we need to focus on treatments. So especially for those who are severely affected, and we've talked about some of the coping mechanisms, but there are patients who are plagued and we need to think about how we can, we can help them um, to you know, allay these, these symptoms that, that are so frightening for them. And Nina, what's next for you? I, I, I know you've been doing a lot of um, really good work in promoting awareness. Um, for myself, there's three things that I want to come from this. I'm retrained as a holistic therapist. Massage and meditation to me as an alternative therapy is important. And I found personally, it really helps me with my hallucinations, meditation especially. So I would love to be able to start a research project into alternative and holistic therapies and the effect on Charles Bonnet syndrome. And then secondly, to be able to, to do a research project as well as Maria probably knows, you do need funding. <laughs> um, so I am going to be doing a, a, a sponsored walk um, to raise funds to give to Esme's Umbrella to put towards research projects. Um, the, the walk is going to take place 
um, in Devon, and I'm going to walk the length of Devon and Cornwall. Gosh, it is wow. 123 <laughs> miles, <laughs> um, and I'm hopefully going to be doing it in this summer, but depending on on the situation with with the country. And Jude, if the future for you, for you, we know will include tireless campaigning for Charles Bonny syndrome. Yeah, this campaign goes on and on, really. Um, I don't yes. know. I've got to. Th- I've got to. I mean, Coronation Street has been so utterly amazing that I've now got to sit down and think what the next step will be um I, I mean i think we have to we have to approach now the um the gps and uh and the hospital doctors who through no fault of their own have never heard of it judith did you want to just mention fight for sight so fight for sight holds my restricted fund and um there is a way you either do it through just my just giving page which is just giving it as me's umbrella or on the uh I think it's the front page of the Fight for Sight website. There is um, a link which takes the money directly into that fund. Now, that fund now is empty because the money has gone to Oxford University, the Nuffield School of Neurosciences, and to Cardiff University. We've split the two. Um, Oxford is, um, is going to use some very sophisticated machinery to look at the brain and to see if there is a chemical produced in the brain just before a Charles Bonnet syndrome uh, hallucination occurs. And Cardiff University is going to do something to do with peripheral vision and memory or whether peripheral vision is a little more suggestible. Um, So we will see. Uh, But at the moment, the fund is completely empty. So if anybody would like to put some money into it, I would be really thrilled because we need to start again. So to summarise, there is... uh... Three helplines, as the R- Esme's Umbrellas helpline, which is run by the RNIB on 020-7391-3299. There's the Macular Society's counselling service, which is 0300 30 30 111. And there's Retina UK's buddy uh, service, which is 0300 111 4000. I'd just like to thank all four of you so much for giving up your time freely. And as, he, as Judith mentioned, if anyone would like to make a donation, our good friends at Fight for Sight for all but UK um, would very much have a very good website in order for you to make a donation. Thank you for watching. Donation links Nina's sponsored walk, justgiving.com slash crowdfunding slash Nina hyphen Chesworth, Esme's umbrella, justgiving.com slash fundraising slash Esme's umbrella. Fight for Sight, fightforsight.org.uk Helplines Esme's Umbrella 020-73913-299 Macula Society 0300 30 30 111 Retina UK 0300 111 4000